ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Crack Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Crack Podcast, number one soccer podcast in America. I'm proud, and I'm here with two of my brothers. My name is Mauricio Mookie Wilson, and I'd like to introduce you. We all know your name, man. Mr. Demarcus Beasley. Hola. That's good. You responded today. You're going to have a good show. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> holding down the fort and being the rock as always, get a big round of applause to the professor, the intellect. And I want to say, the college graduate, let's get a big Ooh. round of applause, please. Oof. Yeah, yeah guys. Respect, respect, respect. What's up, boys? Long time no see. Hey, so no, no more, no more school, huh? No more books. All my binders got burned. Books got <laughs> trashed. Never again. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. I, that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, Gucci and Yeru is going to uh, proceed to do his doctorate. He's going to continue. Dang. I'll make sure I'm going to abuse him and make sure that. Get his mother behind it too, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to get those honorary doctorates. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so hey, so when's uh when's graduation? Oh man, real talk. It's um it's on the 17th, but I'm going to defer to walk in May because uh got I, a spring I, break. I didn't think it was smart with Christmas coming around and my parents, uh, you know, it's not smart for them to travel at this time. So I said, you know, the people that I'm doing it for, if they can't see me, I, I gotta I gotta push it back. So True. that's smart. Yeah. Bees, what's up with you, brother? How you feeling? I'm good, man. Chilling. Same old, same old. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, watching a lot of football. Football. Uh, <laughs> CBS, man. I mean, hectic. Was it three weeks in a row? Yeah, we had three weeks in a row. Three weeks so, in a row. Man. It's like, well, over 70 teams. So you got to know a little bit about something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But no, that's cool. What's the team that you've learned the most about? <laughs> um, that I learned the most about probably the Euro the Europa League teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked uh, Dinamo. Is that no? Definitely not. Isn't Tottenham in Europe? Yeah, Tottenham Europe is League? yeah. Tottenham's in Europe. They League. just beat right. Antwerp, yeah. Yeah, they beat Antwerp. Yeah. Dude, yeah. so you a Tottenham fan? Why are you? Why, no. What, <laughs> there's seventy <laughs> teams in, in out here. You, you want to talk you about why. Tottenham? Because huh? Antwerp is the the, the oh, Belgium. Antwerp used to run Liège when I was there, Donofrio. So I knew that they were playing. Uh, there's a lot of people at that club that I know. Yeah, they're decent. They got a decent team. Yeah. So, Beast, yeah, keep it real. Right. You never used to watch football like that because you always no, were never really active. Now, never. Do you have the bug? Do you find yourself when you don't have to for CBS? You sit around like, you know what? I want to make sure I, I, when you get those footballer emails and on TV, <laughs> you say to yourself, "Oh, I gotta make sure I see that game." Yeah, you know? of course. Oh, I mean, yeah. you gotta see. Yeah, you got to. You got to. So now I just watch random games. But you know what? To be honest, and even when I'm not watching, you know, Champions League or Europa League games, I'm watching. You know, it could be an MLS game. It could be even like I listen to the commentators and how they respond to different. Yes you know, answers and, you know, see how they, how they was handle situations. You know what I'm saying? Like if they say about, you know, analyzing the game or just halftime comments, you know, I try to listen to see if I can pick up any. You You're know, not just any, watching the game anymore. You yeah. watch the technical, technical. I watch, yeah, I watch so the other Here's shit. a great question to you. What commentator that are you impressed with? You're like, you know what? This guy does a good job. Um, I mean, I, I like Martino. I did like Martino Kyle, before I when he Martino. left. I yeah. like, I like, I like Kyle. Um, let me see. Like from from now. Yeah. Um, what did you think about Timmy? Timmy's good. I like Timmy. Better, Timmy's yeah. all right. I got like better. Timmy. I like. And I, you know what? And I like Timmy because you get a, his perspective from a goalkeeper. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's always from defenders or forward or obviously the field players. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So mm-hmm. now we get a perspective and what he sees in the game from a you know uh, a goalkeeper's perspective. So I like that. I think Timmy's good. I like Timmy. I, I am. Who I'm doing this. Like? Who don't you like? Huh? Who don't you like? Who don't I like? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I'm not. You know the the ESPN crew. I'm not a fan of the ESPN uh, crew. Uh, what's that one dude's name? What game? Taylor is Taylor Twelman. <laughs> no, Taylor's okay. I don't mind Taylor. No, what's the one dude's name? Uh, Alejandro. 
Oh, I know the uh, he does he does the West Coast. Uh, yeah, uh, MLS games. I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't really know him, but I'm just saying, as far as like him no. commentating. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, listen, this, yeah, this I can't. We, we, we biased. Not yeah, biased. no. I'm saying I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying I don't know. I don't like him as a person. I'm just saying the commentator. Like he's, he's, uh, seems like he's always, he always wants to, uh, big up somebody's mistakes. You know, what I'm mm-hmm. saying like, oh man, he, why? How can he? he how can he? How can he have missed that? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, football happens. It, you know, mistakes that, happen. That, 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 you know, there's always that different mean. takes you can take with people missing goals and making mistakes and bad passes. Yeah. But it, when when I hear him talk, it seems like he's never made a bad pass in his whole career. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, like, you can't. Gooch, what's your thoughts on Taylor, man? I, I, I don't – he's not for me. He's not my cup of tea. I feel like I'm watching a baseball game. But he's, uh, so to be fair, I haven't been watching much of, much of uh, the ESPN as much. Yeah. Um, I know early on – Taylor kind of took that route of saying, or he, he would believe he was saying what everyone thought. So he l- used to be controversial intentionally, right? Yeah. Um, I think he's kind of, uh, like election. yeah, yeah, pretty much. But I think he's kind of backed off a little bit to, to the point that he's not where he was like in, in, in that deep, like he was two, three years ago. Um, and you get better, right? To be fair, you know. Well, you, you either get I'm, better. I'm still, I'm still waiting on for me to get better. Good. No, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. You know, you know what I, 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 I'm tired of now is that in the MLS game or the U.S. national team game, I don't think we need an English commentator anymore. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree, but I would say that the <clears throat> the commentators that we would have, the American ones are probably all former national team players. It might be a little biased in that, in that respect, right? Yeah, but the football in this country is, is, is not the same as it was 20 years ago. I mean, you have so much people who are not who, who, who would players. you want to be? What, what domestic? There's so, there's, so, there's so many people out here you can, you can put in that position. Give me one domestic, have, I mean, domestic I mean, commentator listen, you want. I'm just talking about in general, though. We, we, you can, the, the person who the English guy I'm speaking of, you know, even if he didn't play in a high level, there's people who are skilled, who played football, who know the game, who are American, who could do that, who could do a better job. You know, and I don't know if it's because, you know, he's been here so long, they want to get rid of him. But a time needs to change. We need somebody who, who, who feels like the American game, who feels like the American sport. And I, think I would that say that for, I don't mind him, to be honest. Um, I, I, I will say wait, that. Who, wait, who y'all talking about? I don't even know, but I know, I know, I forget, I don't know the guy's name, but I know what, I know who he's referring to. And I would say that one thing that I don't like, and a lot, probably most of the American commentators do it, is they bring anecdotes about nothing that has to do with the game, right? And it had to do with their time when they were playing. And I don't particularly care about that during the game. Like, what do you mean? Like what? Like oh, when I was playing that, that that something like this or some funny joke. Oh about yeah, when yeah, they were, but, but when that, they were that shows relate. Like I do that here with our show when we have a topic. I try to. You relate. never see that. You never see that in no other uh, football. That's not true. When I watch um, EPL, they always force not it during the game. game. Not during the game. Yes. No. Nope. Commentators nope. always force it. Oh, when you were playing, you did this or did that. Show me. Or, show or, me. I need yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I agree with Mook. Yeah, it, it, I, need, it, I need receipts. I need receipts. You don't, no, you don't, you don't watch soccer. Yeah, okay, yeah. So you, you don't so see, this, is, this is what happens. You guys ask me a question. When it doesn't align with you guys, you try to throw, I don't Wait, watch now soccer. now you guys, I said one time I agree with Mookie. That's it. No, you one just time. said I don't watch soccer. So I'm saying you guys. So now when I say something, why ask me the question if you don't believe I watch football? Exactly. Let me see the receipts. Let me see the receipts. Can we ask a question, Goose? Do you watch, I, can do I you answer a question? Yes. I watch you every, every, <laughs> every Champions League. You're you watch, league. You watch I highlights. Watch, you watch the I highlights. Watch the Marcus Beasley with his watch, nice fitted suit and his boxers. You watch, I watch the highlights. That. Yo, real talk, though, Gucci paying that six dollars a a month for CBS All Access. Hey, I set my game up. I started wearing pajama pants. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Getting cold in Houston. That's why. <laughs> I'm I'm using Beasley's uh, membership. I don't have to pay. Listen, I want. No, I, want to I get, gotta pay. CBS is making me pay. I gotta pay for my own the subscription. Stop blowing up CBS. <laughs> and listen, I, I want to give a big round of applause to my brother Gucci Yegu, who is uh, selected to be in the U.S. Soccer Council. Correct? Athletes Council. Athletes Council. Tell us a little bit about uh, what that is and uh, what is your role on that on that, on that uh, prestigious. I'm one of many voices, man. Uh, the Athletes Council as a whole has uh, its part in regards to bylaws, in regards to voting rights, 
whether it be the presidential election, vice presidential election, um, really everything that governs U.S. soccer as, as a governing body in, in America. So I'm happy to be on it, um, shake things up, give my opinion, and then just to learn as much as I can. That's what's up. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're on that, on that seat, brother, and I know you're going to do a great job and make us proud. I also want to give a... Oh, no! To the MLS... How the hell you leave my brother Demarcus Beasley off the MLS 25 greatest? Oh, man. All right, all right, all right. All right. There all right. we go. How right. the listen, hell been, you listen. leave off Demarcus Beasley off the 25 greatest MLS players? I've been waiting. There we go. To, I've been waiting to talk about this with people that understand, right? This is ridiculous. And I'm going to say it right flat out. This is bullshit. There is no way in God's green earth. God is green. That Demarcus, <laughs> Demarius, Beasley, Demarius, did not be in the conversation of twenty-five greats, whether it be MLS, whether it be uh, indoor soccer, whether I was, it be, in, I was in the conversation, I just didn't make no, it. No, that's my point. <laughs> you need to be there. There are some people in there. There's no conversation. About there's no conversation. There's no conversation. If Landon's there, you got to be there, hundred percent. Ladies and gentlemen, let me read you in alphabetical order the 25 players that were selected. And I would love to hear you guys' opinions, starting with Aguchi and Yebu first, and your thoughts and who you might feel shouldn't be on the list. All right? and I don't even like that. Oh, We're we going to just do it. Go ahead. Just knock right, Jeff, Jeff Agos, Kyle Beckerman, David Beckham, Carlos Boca Negra, Dwayne De Rosario, Clint Dempsey, Landon Donovan, Marco Echeverri, Robin Frazier, Sebastian Giovinco, Kevin Hartman, Kobe Jones, Robbie Keane, Chad Marshall, Jose Martinez, Tony Miola, Jaime Moreno, Eddie Pope, Preki, Steve Alston, Nick Romando, Carlos Valderrama, the God, Diego Valeri, Valeri Chris Wadolowski, and BWP Bradley Wright Phillips. First Gentlemen. off, first off, first off, I just want I want to do I do want to congratulate everybody that made the list because I mean oh, that's not a that's not an easy list to, yeah. to make because I mean I, I, I was one of the guys that voted. I had to vote. I had to vote. So I you know I had to put my my top twenty five. What I thought was the best, and obviously it wasn't the same. I mean to be honest, it was probably only maybe maybe four or five names that um that was not on my list that was that made the list. You know what I'm saying? So and, and with and um I'm not gonna ask you that, but Gooch, uh, we don't want again, it's a very like B said, a very hard list to make, very difficult to put to put a 25 out of the 25 years that MLS has been in existence. But give me two players that you feel shouldn't have made this list. I got a quick question for you, B because you played with them. The in this in Chicago, mm -hmm. are the championships that Carlos won, were there any of them when you were not with him? Uh no. So there's no way that you can't be on that list if he is. <laughs> That's facts. Tell me what you have won and what he has won in the MLS that you haven't. And then he, got, he had, a, he had a defender, defender of the year. Oh, okay. He had a def I think he won defender of the year twice, I think. Okay. That was it. I think that was it. Okay. I think, yeah, I think that was so it. So I believe that. Carlos Boca Negra won two times MLS Best 11, two times MLS Defender of the Year. And yeah, that's it. Okay. As B is Lo Lowe's was not, Lowe's was not on my list. Okay. I believe that with Bradley Wright Phillips or uh, Joseph Martinez, you got to pick one of the two. You can't yeah. have both of those. You should Who you have picking B's between those two? I mean, I don't think I, I don't, I didn't have neither one of them, to be honest. I don't think. I'm trying to think. I didn't have I didn't have uh, Bradley Wright or um, uh, Joseph. Martin. Joseph. Joseph. He been in the league what three years? Three years. Come he on, man. Three years, but yeah. No, nah, I don't. I don't. But then, but then I take that back because I can't say the years because Bastion. I, I put some, I put Javinko. But he was. And I've heard I've heard I've heard arguments that he shouldn't have made it because he's only he was only there for a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? How many years did you play in the league? Four. Originally, yeah. Before four. you went over the seas. Four. Four. Four years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you shouldn't be on this list unless you won a championship. I think I think that has to be the, and that, and that that takes me out right there. I mean, that has to be you know a you championship, championship or oh no, you yeah, want to win a cup. open cup. You have to win something, right? You have to at least win a cup first off. First, first off, um, and then so um, you know, Wondolowski shouldn't be on the list. You nah, think? he should. But well, he, well, I know. He, I'm just saying based on his logic. Mm -hmm, yeah, he, but, yeah, he but you know, everybody gonna have different. Everybody gonna have different opinions. <laughs> I look, I love Steve Ralston. I love him. I 
love them like cooked food. But for me, I was like, nah, oh, man. You, th- to say you're the best 25 in, ahead of these, no. Nah. If he still kept the assist record, then I think that uh, – then I can understand that. But for him to uh, – You know who, get to get broken? You know one dude I did have that didn't make it? Who's that? Uh, San Fuegos. Mm. That dude was nasty. 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 He was a good. He was a good player. How, how, how is uh, Jorge Campos not on this list? <laughs> <laughs> how many? He only played with a couple years in the MLS. He was yeah, a field yeah. player, a goalkeeper. <laughs> he didn't up. You guys think Clem Dempsey should have been on the list? I mean, yes and no. The, the I say issue, yes because, huh? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, nah, I'm saying yes because uh, I mean it is Clint and what he what he uh, I mean he did win a championship 2016. Yeah, he did win a championship. And um, I mean, obviously, one of the best players that ever played. Um, but I just think when when we when we when we talk about the twenty five best players, and they say on and off the field, uh, and in just MLS, not what you did in Europe, yeah. not what you do with the national That's team, it's just what you did in MLS. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think he did. I think he did enough to make the list. Um, but I would I would have if if he didn't make the list, I wouldn't have thought, oh man, he should have been on it. You kind of know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, so like I, I like I'm okay. Obviously, I'm okay with Clint being on the list. But I'm saying if he was not on it, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it, because he, you know, he wasn't his most of his career and most of the things he did with the national team in, in Europe. You know, what I'm saying he was only in New England for a couple of years, and then he came back with Seattle. He did win a championship. I know he was injured when he, when that all that happened, but still, I love that Kevin Hartman is on the list. I think I've oh, the goalkeepers are fine. The goalkeepers yeah. are fine. I thought they did. I thought all the goalkeepers. Even though I wish Donovan Rick has got got uh, yeah, that, that's a tough call too. I think he could have uh, made the cut as well. Um, what about uh, Diego Obi Valeri? Jones? Yeah, oh, I was gonna say him. I was gonna say Belair. I don't think. Yeah, I was gonna say that as well. That's what. That's what I would have switched with San Fuegos, In my opinion, that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the rest. I mean, like I said, you know, that's it's a it's a very hard list to make. And I would, I had. Are you surprised to, that Michael Bradley didn't make the list? No. Well, well, Bees, we we had an argument about that when Bees was making the list. Um, was Michael Michael Bradley was on Bees' list in the beginning? Yeah, and I I, I was <laughs> like, why the why the hell is Michael Bradley on your list? <laughs> but we'll then, but that. then, but then we yeah we talked about it, and then because uh, it was like a discussion. Because I mean, yo, when you looked at if you if you saw like all the players on the list that we had to, to choose from. And I'm going back from, you know, when I was in, in the league in, back in the 2000s, there were some ballers, you know what I'm saying? Like, and people forget how good these players are. Some of the teams were just mm-hmm. because of it's 2020 and we don't have, you know, the, the you know, we don't have the tape. YouTube, you don't have the YouTube. Yeah, we don't have, you know, YouTube. You can watch a couple of highlights, but you don't know, like, Ante was a beast. Dante. You know what I'm saying? When he was playing, Raza was a beast. Razo. But he don't get that kind of because now it's, it's you know, it's not, it's not cool, you know what I'm saying, back to play back then. So, um, but yeah, so I, I try to, you know, be as honest as I could and give respect to the older one, the, the, uh, the history of that league and, and now. So who's the best player that played with two bees in Chicago? Yeah. George uh, nah, Peter Nowak. Peter? Peter. Peter. But you gotta understand, you gotta understand our team. Like half our team was a national team at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah, you got CJ. Yeah, we had look up top. We, yeah, I mean we can start. We can start with look up top. We had Rozov and Wolfie national team. Mm-hmm. Dima was coming in sometimes with national team. Diego Diego Gutierrez was coming in sometimes with national team. Myself, Chris Armis, Jesse Marsh sometimes with national team. Then we had in the back Carlos, CJ, Zach came in with the national team sometimes. No, that was a whole. That was a, yo. Even I, I think Evan Whitfield even made a camp, uh, made a national team camp once or twice. Shouts to Evan Whitfield. You know what I'm saying? So we had no, our, our whole team. Yeah, our whole team in 2000 was the national team. A lot of yeah, it. yeah. So, um, um, Chicago Bulls. This, this Valeri has won the the MLS MVP at 2017 and was an MLS Cup winner in 2015. So. You know, it's, it's definitely a strong play. Uh, Look, he's a he's a sick player. <laughs> I ain't taking nothing from. Yeah, him. I'm not saying he, yeah, we're not saying that. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm just saying he's one of the best 25 ever. Bradley Wright Phillips. He won the Golden Boot twice, and MLS Best Eleven twice, and he's six all time MLS goals. He he didn't win a cup. Um, I think that's huge. I mean, especially as a, as a striker, especially the person who played what he had. Uh, he didn't just play four years. How long Bradley played? He's playing right now, and he, and he played uh, 
six years with the Red Bulls, you know? So, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to play at least eight years in the league and, and win anything. For me, I figured there's no way you can tell me that he's the 25 best. Even for me, Roy Lash is a better striker. I mean, yeah, I, I, I was just well, I think, about I think, to say I think, that. I, well, I think with Bradley, it goes to the same thing with uh, Wondolowski. They were both so prolific in regards to their goal scoring that you're like, all right, Roy Lasseter is a great name to be put on that list if you're going to put Bradley and Wando in there as well. So there might be people like there's a there's a lot of people I think people forgot about because it predates them, right? That's They're what like, I'm saying. That's never, what I'm saying. I didn't think of Roy until you just said it. Like, and he definitely you'll be on this list. Easy. Yeah, if you if you saw if you saw the list, um, you know, obviously we had, I had a whole list of like I, I can't remember how many players it was. Maybe it was like a hundred or something. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, whatever number it was. But if you saw the list, you would see the you know you would see the names and you would see you know the accolades and what they did and blah blah blah. But then you'd be like, oh man, yeah, I remember what they used to do. Forgot about that. You know yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like that's that's kind of how I was. I was like, okay, I remember what they did when I was playing, playing against them, playing with them, and then I try to put that into the, some of the players now. You know, and then what they did for the league, what they won individually and in the team. You know what I'm saying? So that's all. That's all. I was, I was just being as fair as I could, but it was hard, though. I'll tell you that. It wasn't easy. Bees and I'll tell you that. I didn't, I didn't put myself on the list. I didn't, make, I didn't put myself on there. Which is who you are. But let me tell you something, Bees. This is the crack. I need an honest answer. Do you feel that you are overlooked and underappreciated <laughs> in the space of U.S. soccer? I, I, I think I, I, I probably get more I want love. A CBS answer, I probably get man. more love out of this country than I do in the country. I'll put it that way. Explain that. I mean, it just it just what it is. I mean, from you know what I'm saying, uh messages that I get, all of it, a lot of it's in Spanish, a lot of it's in Dutch <laughs> when I was in Europe and Rangers. And that, yeah, and Rangers as well. Um, you know, I mean all that a lot of a lot of stuff in Europe was was hit and miss because of my injuries, a lot of it. Yeah. Um, but uh but yeah, I mean people remember when I did play and when I, you know, I was I was I was I was decent. You know what I'm saying? So um, they don't they don't forget. Man, I, I, I was but, 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 but it doesn't but it doesn't make man. B but it doesn't make but it doesn't make me I mean I I don't you know I, I don't care. It makes it me bitter for you because I don't, I don't care. I'll tell you why it makes me bitter for you because we have these young all stars right now on the US national team. You were in that first class to be there. Facts. Right out of high school making an impact in the MLS on the national team as a teenager in 2002 World Cup. I don't know how these people can forget you. That's why I said, if you're talking about land, if they're talking about landing, you have to be in that conversation, period. I know you won't say it, but I can say it for you. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Because I'm your man. I've known you since you were probably five pounds lighter. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) So... I, it, it annoys me, and I do see that. Like, probably get more love from from overseas than oh and, yeah, without a doubt. Without in your own doubt. country, you know, yeah, which without is a doubt. Without you know, a doubt. you know, a lot of people say also a friend to the room, Kyle Beckerman, as a person that they were surprised to see on that list as well. Um, Kyle, first team, first all time in MLS games played with 498. In uh, 2009, he won the MLS Cup. Um, and, uh, you know, Kyle's, Kyle's been a solid player throughout the MLS. Obviously had a long, 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 long career. Started in 2000 with the Miami Fusion. A lot of people say that, you know, he, he's definitely not one of the better uh, midfielders. You know? Kyle might not be one of the best midfielders, but he is one of the most well-known. And his, his record and his longevity and his durability in this league speaks for itself. There's... It's not easy. It's not easy to stay in the league and have the impact in the duration that he's had in this yeah. league. That's yeah. that goes without saying. Like, there's people that have an impact for two, three, four years. This man has been here for what, twenty-one seasons? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, Probably like, yeah, and on yeah, yeah. That's yeah. ridiculous. That's that. That in itself says something about because there's injuries and there's this and there's that, and he has stood the test of time in order to be playing at 38 years old and making an impact on his team. That's, that goes without saying. So there's my knees. I grew grew up playing with Kyle. I grew up playing with Kyle on St. Club team, uh, state team, all that stuff. So I'm I'm happy to see him on that list. But like B said with some of these other people, if he weren't on the list, I wouldn't be surprised either. So 
it go it can go either way. We are now into our say what what say what what segment of the broadcast. I want to speak to you guys a little bit about the boss of Benfica, Mr. Jesus. Um, Jesus said, uh, "I do I don't know what happened and what was said, but nowadays." All this about racism is very fashionable. As a citizen, I have the right to think my own way, and I can only have a concrete opinion when I know what was said at the moment. These days, anything that is said about a black person is always a sign of racism. And the same thing about a white man is no longer a sign of racism. It's a wave that has taken over the world. Maybe there was a sign of racism, but I don't know what was said to that coach. He was responding when he asked him about what happened at PSG uh, with Dembaba and Webo. Um, Bees, what the hell is this man thinking? I'm still tripping when he just said it, it could be a sign of racism. Mm -hmm. What is that? What, what does that mean? A sign of racism? It's either is racist or it's not. There's no it's in not. between. You don't you don't become half pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there ain't no in between. Yeah, I mean, just on here, I mean, obviously we'll get into the other PSG part, but just as comments, just ig ignorance. It's ignorance. It's not opening your mind and listening to what people are talking about and understanding where we're coming from. You know what I'm saying? That, that's just, that's, and that's part of the problem. You know, they, they see, they see one way. They see, they see themselves as them maybe not being a problem. So that's like, okay, well, I don't care about nobody else. But there's a whole society that's hurting right now. So you have to put that into perspective and understand that what he said was racist. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think the coach can gather and, and really understood that whole point of it. And it's just, for me, it's just, it's just him being ignorant, not understanding um, what's going on around him, just being very, very closed minded in his thoughts and not opening it up and saying, okay, yes, I, I want to hear what people have to say. I want to understand why this man thought it was racist to, to say that. You know what I'm saying? He just said, no, no, no. It's just, this is just a wave. It's like a... The man said it's fashionable. Um, yeah, it's fashionable. fashionable. Yeah, race, racism, I mean, racism is, is fashionable. It's brand new. That means it's trendy. That means it's just, right. it's just now that it's going yeah, it's on and people making some of it. Gooch, you played in Portugal um, and you've played against Benfica. You know about the culture. Is this, does this man represent Portuguese thought process and where he plays for one of the biggest clubs in Portugal? I'm not going to say he represents them because I can't speak for the people, right? <laughs> but he does represent a number of ignorant people that just, maybe in his mind, he feels that his way of thinking isn't uh, offensive mm -hmm. because he doesn't mean it to be offensive, but that doesn't mean anything, right? Because you don't intend something to be offensive doesn't mean it's not offensive, right? So, so when somebody, so that's, that's him saying, okay, because I called him Negro, that's not racist. Well, look, it wasn't until we told you it was, and now that, you still feel the same way. Right, that's now what I'm you, saying about the understanding part. Yeah, yeah you're right. And you continue right. to do it. So now you, you knowledgeably know that you're being racist, but continue to do it because you don't want to disrupt your way of being. Right, that's right. foolish. That's just the ignorance that I just don't listen to. And I'm, I'm ashamed of him and for his club not to speak out against something so dumb from a, from a veteran coach. Right to say that racism is a trend and it's trendy. An idiot only says that, right? Because he's never been in a position to be treated in a racist manner. Like, so he, for him to said, make he that, he said, comment, "White people don't don't experience racism." Enough. He said that. Listen, I've been I've played in Portugal. I've played in Spain. Never once have I heard a person refer to another white guy as blanco. <laughs> <laughs> never once could I say the same about a black guy. Couldn't, couldn't say that because it happens all the time. They all, you know, you'll be like, negro, negro, and they'll ask you for the ball. In their mind, it might not be malicious. And I know it's not malicious, right? But if you don't educate them about how it's wrong, they're going to continue to do it. And that's what's happening right now. We're educating a demographic of people like, yo, this is not respectable ways of operating. You need to cut this out. And he's like, well, why? I've been doing it forever. That doesn't mean that since you've been doing it forever that it's right. That's you know, right. At, yeah. at one point, racism, or not racism, slavery was legal. Does that mean that it was right? No, it does not. It was never right just because it was legalized, right? So they need to understand this. And if he doesn't, then for me, I'd be like, yo, that's not the kind of coach that I want to represent my club. Get out of here. As good as he is as a coach, I'd be like, you're, you're gone because you don't represent our values. 
That's right. the scary part, you know, the power that he has and who he is and where he is right now in the Federation of Portugal. Um, it's scary, right? Because there's a lot of Africans who play in Portugal. There's a lot of Portuguese who are black, right? Who, who are, my, are immigrants of, of, of Africa. And, you know, Benfica is a top club that a lot of players are going to come through that system. And if a coach already has that type of mentality and that type of thought process, um, it, it's, it's sad, it's scary. And I feel like some, you can't just say that statement and casually just go on about his career. That's some bullshit. Or, I, well, I, listen, I, I, I want to introduce our guests into the, to the show, to the room. This is somebody who's uh, up and coming, but now nah, he is here. He is present. He's one of the best center backs that we have in a U.S. camp. Also, we feel that he's one of the best center backs and potentially be one of the better center backs in the world. Let's give a big, 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 big round of applause all the way from Philly, representing Philadelphia Union and their 2020 Astrid Mark COVID season, great season. Let's give a big round of applause for Big Smooth, a.k.a. Mark McKenzie. <laughs> Yo, what's up with that introduction, though? Yeah. Well, you didn't like it? Me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, it was great. I, thought, yeah, yeah. I don't think he heard it, though. I think it was hot. I, I think he heard it. I ain't nah. never seen an introduction like that in my life. <laughs> yeah, Goose, I'll never say that about you, Goose. Yeah, right? this man came on. This man, Mark, came on the uh, the Zoom call looking like Usher. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Welcome to the crack, Mark. What up, brother? What's happening? What's happening? How y'all doing? Hey, did, hey, did, you, hey, did you hear that? Did you hear that in introduction? Yeah, I heard. I heard the latter part. You heard the whole. The whole. Oh, it was for five minutes, bro. Oh, hey, hey, man, well, I appreciate hey, it. Hey, hey, Goose, the Usher, Big Smooth, it all kind of you know. Yeah. Maybe the man. Maybe the man. He's smooth like that, man. <laughs> maybe he is. Maybe he can break dance and, uh, and do a moonwalk for us or something like that. I don't, I don't know about all that, but you know, well, I've gotten right. the impression a couple of times. But but yeah. Yo, Mark, thank you so much for joining us, man. We 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 have uh, been waiting for your season to be over to get you to be a part of the crack. Um, obviously, uh, all of us has been watching you for so long, and uh, just very proud of you. And uh, just wanted to get a chance to speak to you and get a chance to kick it with you here in uh, in the crack, man. How you feeling? Nah, man, I appreciate y'all having me first and foremost. Uh, it's been a crazy year, you know, for everybody. So, you know, got some downtime now to, to kind of recover, recharge a little bit, spend some time with the family, you know, kick the feet up. Um, but again, 2021 right around the corner. So, uh, hey, man, you, hey, you, you in the dark? What a, the, turn on the damn light. Hey, man, look, I got the spotlight on here. Got on here. He got the glow. He got the glow on. He's smooth, glow. man. He set the moment for himself, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, we, we all got the studio set up, all right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, make yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Hey, man, don't listen to bees. Half the time, his internet don't work anyway. So. <laughs> uh, it's going to cut out man. in a minute. It's going to cut out. <laughs> man, uh, we're happy, how you doing, we're, man, man, happy to have you on, man. We've been waiting like six months, calling your secretary, your agent. Oh, uh, man. You know, Gonna get through. I'm like hanging up on us, man. Bro. Really, he's really brand new. <laughs> you, you're on the national. You're not seeing the national team now. I mean, yeah. like, bro. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all. Tell y'all a story. Oh, uh, <laughs> he, 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 he already knows. Uh, shoot. So I'm like, I'm proud of my little man. You know, he's doing good things. <laughs> I, I, te I text him to say something. This man said, who is this? Who this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I, I forgot said, to save the number. All right? <laughs> said, who is this? I said, oh, oh, for real? It's like that now? Okay, wow. Arthur Raymond. I said, okay. Bro, look, yeah, you had a DC to save your number. Couldn't even save my number. Bro, I was busy, all right? Hey, that's, his, hey, like, that's his new generation. That's his new generation. Oh, I was busy, he said. I was busy. <laughs> I, was bro, busy. I think it was like the latter part of campus. I don't know, bro. I was I was probably in, in a meeting or uh, half film or something. You know, was... that's, what he, that's what he tells hoes, too. Listen, Mark, <laughs> <laughs> is it true that you come from the Bronx and you're in New York City uh, born and raised or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you, you, uh, what, when you, you left New York at what age? Like right at intermediate school. So, oh, where? Wow. So you, um, all right, so you in New York? What part of the Bronx did you uh, grow up? I was two thirty third Street, um, two thirty third and, and Murdoch. Yeah. Right, right, right. yeah, 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 Mark. All right, and your yardie? You yeah, make it man. Too? Get yeah, out of here, man. Right, here, here they go. What's your oh, fault? Yeah. Every time you're in Jamaican, you got to Hey, let, hey, let Mookie, hey, let Mookie have this one. You had your Nigerian brother. <laughs> exactly. Last week, Thank you, know, you man. Saying. Now Mookie got his, his Jamaican boy, <laughs> so. Exactly. My bad, my bad, my bad. You know, I was a fan of you, and I found out you you a Jamaican. I found you from the Bronx. Now now I'm about to put your jersey up. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, my daddy, from, uh, he's from St. Catharines. So, nice. Yeah. 
Nice, nice. And what's your father's name? Mark as well. Mark. Oh, okay. Like, different okay, middle right. names. Not a junior. Not a junior. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Means yeah. I ain't never seen Mookie as engaged as he is right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he pulled his seat up close to the yeah, microphone. He said, he said, he said, hey, what's your daddy's name, man? Where'd you grow up, man? What school did you go to? And this man getting all close to the screen and everything. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, I just found out today that Sean Paul's wife is my cousin, and Sean, I knew Sean Paul for twenty years, and we had no idea that his wife is uh, my cousin. So that's how Jamaica is. Everything is connected. You know what I mean? Of course, of course, of course. So, but but listen, you, you was you was able to come up in one of the best academies in the country, Philadelphia Union. Mm -hmm. uh, how did they see you play, and at what age did you get over there? Uh, so I was playing for at the time a regional team. It was an EDP, Eastern Development okay. Program, yeah. and, and Tony Williams was the head of it. And he would have these little com uh, he called them like conference camps. Mm -hmm. uh, but he would call us out for, you know, the regional guys for a weekend trip, you know, get us away. You know, you come in, you know, a suit, um, just just ultimately oh. trying to, to show us what the professional environment is like, what it's like to be away from family and whatnot, and just a taste of, of the next step. Um, and from there, you know, I, w I was a regular in those camps. And then from there, the union was starting their pre-academy, mm -hmm. uh, union juniors. Uh, um, and Jim Curtin was actually the uh, the one of the coaches, you know, for, for the team at the time. And he was the ace. Yeah, Tony, he he hit me up on that evening. It was a random, it was, like, it was like a Tuesday evening. And he was like, listen, Mark, you need to get up to King of Prussia. Um, and at that time, I was already in Delaware. And it's about an hour drive. So it's 3.30 yeah. in the afternoon. My dad is is still working in Manhattan at, at the hospital for special surgery. Uh, my mom, she's cooking dinner. You know, she's trying to get ready. And, you know, he sends a message. He's like, yo, you got to get out to King of Prussia. So now everybody's scrambling. Like my mom's like, I, I can't make it. I gotta cook. I got, I got your sister. She has dance mm. class. My dad's like, all right, I'm on my way from work. You know, I'll meet you on, on 95. Don't worry about it. You know, and, and I'll shoot him up there. So you know, ultimately, my mom was like, fine, I'll do it. Um, and she took me out there. Um, and from there, it was just you know going out there like two, three times a week until the academy officially started. Um, and you know, they they took a chance on me. I was a striker though at the time, but but they wanted me to be a So was yeah, Goops. Man. So was Goops. So was Goops. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, hey, got hey, his, he got his claim to fame story. Hey, and look, at me. hey, 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 hey. If that's what it means, this you gonna have a nice career, brother. It's kind of hard to play football um, growing up in the Bronx, uh, mm -hmm. especially the early age. Did you, your father big? Did your father play back in Jamaica as well? Yeah, you know, he, he likes to say he was a lot better than he actually was. But, <laughs> you know, he, uh, yeah, he played all the way through. But it's hard when I say, like, you know, you don't have really, and I don't access. know, I'm judging, like, access also to fields, but also the, the community environment. Like, outside, mm -hmm. everybody's playing basketball, football in the mm -hmm. street. Nobody's really playing soccer like that, unless, though, some parts of the Bronx, a lot of Africans and West Indians. Did you have that? Did you get a chance to have that pickup, that environment? Were you going to boys and um, Erasmus? To yeah, play ball yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, like I kind of just came up because my my aunt, she was a big basketball. You know, she loved basketball, and my dad, you know, Yardi, he was, you know, big football. So it was just like, you know, the two kind of collided. So I was in the street hooping with my yeah. my cousins and neighbors, and then I was kicking, you know, the ball my pops against the side of the house, you know, and he's playing a little trying to play pickup at least. Yeah, um, you know, with the cats around me. So I think it was it was kind of a mix of both. Um, but it wasn't until I really, um, I didn't have a lot of people around me who are, who are ultimately on the same mission of trying to play soccer, you know, and as you I got older. Ball, just, you see the ball now? Of course, Goose. Come you? on, come you on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, Goose. Don't, 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 don't disrespect me like that, bro. You can't yeah, come in. Goose. You can't grow up in New York City and don't know how to play basketball. Uh, come on, bro. Mook you to the rescue. Here you go. <laughs> listen, man. The tri hey, listen, my, my aunt, she would take me to Rucker Park. She would take me out there, watch some hoops and stuff. Uh, you know, I was young, so I was getting You would play AU or anything? I play you coming up, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know about gauchos and stuff. Mm -hmm. like I know, yeah. Gooch. I know you ain't talking. You can't ball. You oh, can't hoop. Can't ball. Hey, yeah, hey, listen, Gooch, listen, hey, listen, Gooch listen, is listen. the most not uh, uncoordinated basketball player. You know, I've ever you, seen. you know why he says that? Because I beat him one on one. I know, Mark. I'm that's not, a damn lie. Ask him, ask him in residency. Then he's like, "Oh, because you kept on posting me up." I'm like, that's yeah, a damn basketball, lie. basketball is basketball, right?" Yeah, that's a damn lie. There was no, there was no footage. Are you going? No are you going to ask Shaq to start doing crossovers? <laughs> nah, <laughs> you ain't going to do it. You ain't doing it. <laughs> Hilarious. But, but Mark, I'll speak about family. Um, talk to us a little bit about when you, uh, your mother and the, what she, the. I, I know when I, when you were in the academy that you took off some time while your mother was uh, uh, dealing with cancer. Can you speak a little bit about that 
moment in time and you making that decision and what you went through, how you bounced back? Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a tough time, you know, just because I was, uh, let's see, I was U14, uh, coming U15. And uh, I remember because it was October of, of that year. Um, and I come home from practice and my mom, she was, she was kind of, her, her vibe was off. I could tell something was wrong. My dad was quiet, you know, and I come home and she, and she hit me up. She was like, listen, Mark, I need you to sit down. Uh, I went to the doctor today and they found a, a mass in my breast, you know, so I have breast cancer, um, you know, stage, stage two right now. So, um, you know, guys going to get me through it. I'm going to be fine, but, but I just need you to know that. And, you know, I took the moment because my mom is like my rock, you know, she's my twin. We look just alike um, and we got the same birthday, you know, so it's just like, wow, it was tough. So at the moment it was just, you know, I got you, mom, you know, I'm here for you. Uh, but I came back to my room and I just kind of broke down, you know, just cause it's my mom, you know, and I hear so much. My grandma had battled breast cancer, you know, probably six years prior and, mm -hmm. you know, she's been breast cancer free now for, for over 20 years, but um, now having it to, having to be my mom, you know, someone I, I love so dearly, you know, and cancer is one of those things where you just don't know, you know, it, it could seem like everything's going great and it take a turn for the worse. Um, and on the flip, you know, it could, go away, you know, by, by the grace of God. So it was, yeah, a difficult time. Just uh, spoke to the coaches, spoke to the academy, you know, spoke to my school. And I just, I, I need some time right now just because, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's a lot to digest. Um, you know, uh, on my dad's side, my, my dad's grandmother passed away from cancer. Wow. Um, so going to her funeral, and it was it was difficult. But uh, but one of those moments where, you know, I think it, it uh, she forced me to, to really – you know, challenge myself to to not see it as a down. You know, she's like, I'm gonna get through it. You know, and seeing her resiliency and seeing her strength through all that, you know, it was you know definitely some tough months as mm -hmm. as she was going through chemo and and seeing her come home sick and laying in bed all day and you know have to go to practice and and whatnot. It was it was like it was one of those things where I was like, if she could push through this, I I gotta push through it. I gotta be the rock for her that she's always been for me. Um, and I think it was it was at that moment that it really turned for me, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go out there and do what I do. You know, I'm gonna do it for her. You know, because she's 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 always been that been that for me. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was definitely you know, but again, by the grace of God, she's been out breast cancer free for over let's see eight years now, nine years. Um, so shout out to Mama, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. But it sounds was, like you use that adversity as a motivational factor to kind of propel you and like say, look, man, there ain't no reason I shouldn't succeed, right? If, if this 100%. woman. If this woman is pushing through this, there ain't no reason why I shouldn't, man. And that's like we like like Mookie just said, blessings to your family and and, and respect to you for grinding. At, you know, because that's not easy for a youngin to to take that kind of news and pressure and and kind of transform that into a, a positive, right? Because a lot of a lot of people can't do that, right? And you did yeah. it very young. Yeah, it was it was tough for sure. You know, it wasn't all smooth. You know, it was some some more difficult moments. Um, you know, when uh, I remember it seemed like things were going in the right direction and then she kind of took a, a plummet for a little bit and, and finally worked back up. But um, again, you know, every time I got an injury, a knock, you know, I was out of the, the squad, you know, I wasn't in favor or, you know, somebody I was get counted out. You know, I think mm -hmm. it was all those, you know, remembering what she had gone through, you know, remember she was doing, you know, for me and how much she had done for me, you know, so now it's, you know, again, like you said, propelling myself to a position where, you know, I could, I could be that blessing for, for my family one day, so. Definitely. You know, you know guys, you, you uh, Bees and Gooch, <clears throat> you did um, the residency. And now Philadelphia Union, they have the, you know, each club has their own residency. How is it, and any of you guys can answer, how is it being like, you know, away from your friends and being 24-7 in a football environment? Yeah, I was homesick. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. The first probably first month, I was home every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I was home. Every, I want. I want to go because the, the more so the reason why was because, and Goose knows this. I was one of the, the first ones myself. And who Goose? Who came with me first that first month? That, those first six months. Was it you and Alex? Yeah, me and Yee. Me and Alex Yee. Yee. Yeah. So we were the only two, only two people in uh, residency because everybody uh, waited until uh, January. You know what I'm saying to come. Mm -hmm. And to register. I was there in August because my school was like 
yo, if you want to leave, you can't go yeah. half. You know, yeah, you gotta you gotta <laughs> right. leave now. You right. can't go halfway. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, the whole season. I mean, the whole year. So, but I was home every week, yo. <laughs> I was <laughs> home every week. I mean, yo, I was what 16, 15, not even 16, 15 years old. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, and I was in Indiana all the way down to Florida. Yeah, my mom's buying me tickets every weekend, yo. But bees love some Florida though. <laughs> bees love some. I mean, it's never easy to leave an environment that you're used to at such a young age, right? That's like it's like taking a kid to the pool and throwing them in before they had swimming lessons, right? And be like, right. well, let's see who can float. <laughs> you right, know, some, right. some of these cats are going to float and some of them are going to sink right to the bottom, you know, and you're going to figure it out right there by process of elimination. But, you know, it, it's definitely not easy. And I commend all the young athletes that, that are able to sustain that kind of adversity and that difficultness, that difficult period, rather. So yeah, it, was, it, was, it was different. Residency was definitely different than... Uh, why are you smiling? I know you got a story. No, nah, I don't got no story. <laughs> yeah, you got a story. I mean, we all got stories. Remember when we snuck out the last day? Yeah, I know. That was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all got stories, but yeah. like what, the, the residency we, we grew up doing is completely different than the DEA, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's not going to say one's better than the other, but it, it's, it's definite, it was definitely different. Uh, but it made us into the, the players that we became. So, so Mar, this is what I want to know about the about, – uh, what's the name of the academy again? The school? Uh, YC Academy. Okay. What's the what 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 type of stuff goes on? Like these guys not these guys are scared to say it. But what stuff goes on behind the scenes? Sneaking in girls, uh, food, whatever. Um, bees used to hustle everybody and roll dice and take everybody's money. I still I still do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean. <sighs> He look, he's like, it's the crack. This is the crack. This is the crack. This is the crack, Mark. So this is this is where you air everything out. There ain't no filter, right? All right, all right. All right. <laughs> so like, I mean, it it was pretty much uh, the cats who were staying in the house. They were all locked down. Like it was, mm-hmm. the house parents were were always they were strict about you got to be with him at this time. You got to uh, food. You know, food past a certain time. You can't do this, that, and the other. But. There's always bending of the rules. Um, <laughs> he said bending of the rules. <laughs> there's always bending of the rules. So, like, depending on where you were in the academy and, like, oh, if you were, you know, one of the elite guys, like, you 16, yeah. and you want to rise, you got a couple first-team trainers under your belt. You know, they yeah, would sometimes yeah, yeah. bend it a little bit and say, all right, you know what? Uh, you know, sounds, like you talk, sounds like you're talking about yourself. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> not myself, not myself, not myself. Uh, but, but, yeah, it was, uh, I think it was, it was kind of, subjective you know some houses were i think there were like two or three households um that, that boarded for the students but um there were some houses a little more strict but but if you got the right house parent usually you could talk to the cats at the school and say listen like what's going on like who you know who's in this house who's in that house you know what's the house parent like you you could set yourself up for Finagling. success you Finagling. know yeah. and, 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 and then uh and then, then uh, what is it? What was it called? Voluntary back then, right? It's IMG now. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, voluntary, we we knew what the cameras was. I just I put it uh-huh. like that. <laughs> I, I, I put it like that. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna tell too many stories because that's a long, long time ago. But we knew what the cameras was. We knew when the the councils was checking the dorms. You know, yeah. they like they had set times. They had of set course. times. Like um, they come at like you know three o'clock and then seven and then you know what I'm saying. So they they it's was, it was like clockwork. So you knew okay they come at three. Let me see about you know three oh five three ten. I can do this. I can do that, and then you're good. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. So we we knew that. We knew that. That's that's what that's how it was. That's how it was. Uh, uh, Mark, let's talk a little bit about the U twenty group that I thought was uh, phenomenal, and um, I'm sure you must have been so frustrated getting injured. And do you think that maybe hindered you on jumping the pond, as bees like to say, to go to Europe? <sighs> Like I, I see it in both ways because um, it was on one side. It was you know definitely frustrating to to be able to uh, or to not be able to play as much as I wanted to to be named captain and then to be on the bench. You know yeah. it's like, yo, what's going on? I have people yeah. messaging me like, what's happening? What, what like so so that part of it was definitely um, you know difficult for me. You know as having such a good twenty cycle and having helped qualify for the World Cup and now into a, a 2020 that I was extremely excited for, you know, coming out of senior team, my first senior team camp, you know, that January um, going into the season and then kind of hitting a, 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 a rocky, you know, patch, 
um, where I come out of preseason, get injury, miss the season open, and now I'm building back into the group and another knock, and then finally back in the group again. And right after, I think it was LA Galaxy game, you know, I come in, you know, uh, after the red card and finish the game out for the last, like, 15, 20 minutes, and now about to start, you know, against Montreal the following weekend. And then the night before the game to go to the hospital because I got to have a, an emergency after me with, I think, three weeks before the World Cup, before we leave for the, the World Cup pre-camp, it was like, bro, crazy. What, what, what is going on? And yeah. on calls with Tab and the, the, the national team staff, and like, listen, I'm, I'm going to be fit. I'm going to be ready and trying to figure out if my body's going to be, you know, ready. You know, am yeah, I going to be yeah. strong enough? I hadn't played a match in maybe a month, month and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, so the sharpness is that there, you know, what is that like? Can I, am I going to be able to manage a 90? Am I, you know, fit? so all these things running through my head, you know, am I mentally in a spot where I'm going to be able to benefit the team and help the team, uh, to help lead the team, you know, cause, cause Tab leaned on me a lot in that cycle. Um, and then to go there and not play as much and, you know, it, it was definitely tough, but I think it taught me a lot, uh, as well as a leader, you know, because I, I had to help the group in, in different ways. You know, I couldn't be on the pitch you know, it matches the way I wanted to. But at the same time, I had to make sure I wasn't carrying myself in a way that could be detrimental to the group. You know, I wasn't pissed off with everybody, you know, or lack of days going training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, off yeah, the like pitch, Gooch. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Bad hey, attitude. Gooch, hey, Gooch, hey, Gooch, yeah, he used to mope when he wasn't hey. playing. Boy, boy, I'm telling you. First of all, you, you know, what? you know, when, 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 first of all, when did I not play? Gooch never played. Gooch never on the bench. Sorry, Gooch. I mean, I, no, I was on the bench sometimes. You know, it's it's, it's 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 normal. It's football. It happens. You know. You see how they try to pick on me, bro. You, you gotta be. You gotta have tough skin in this group. We can't have. We can't, we can't all be as as a uh, world class as Gooch. This guy. Oh, oh, sorry, or shoot, or I shoot have 25, 25 titles to my name. I've been in <laughs> ten World Cup cycles I since I was that. fifteen years old. I didn't and... say that. But, 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 I played with. But, I played. That was a great. I, I respect those answers, and I, I think you you handled it. Um, so well, but also, you know, seeing people like Chris Richards and these other players get an opportunity, and even now playing in Europe, you have to know, like, damn, mm-hmm. if I would have went to that U twenty. I know I would have been right now playing maybe Champions League right now. For sure, for sure. I think that that was in the back of my head as well. It was a huge opportunity. You're playing on a on a world stage, you know, it's a U four cup, but it's the World Cup at the end of the day, and there's numerous eyes on you. This is the best young talent in the world, right? You know, in the game against France. Not being able to participate in that game that was so anticipated and and so uh, intense. Exactly, you know. I think that was like, uh, dang, you know, if I yeah. if I really showed out, you yeah. know, that would have been a ticket right there to to now, you know, take the next step. You know, um, you definitely would have called back Gooch. <laughs> he was. <laughs> so, hey, so okay, okay. So so where are you going? Where am I going? Right now yeah. I'm going. No, 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 you know what I'm talking about. So, hey, <laughs> you, we, we didn't hear the rumors. We didn't hear the rumors. We, where, ain't, we ain't media people. We only where, are we, where are we booking our tickets to watch in the stands? Hey, Bees, yes. I want you to see this, Bees. What, what language? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what language What language are you going to be speaking uh, next season? Man, I don't know. English is international language, so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is, this dude really think we the press. Look at this. Nah, man, nah. Honestly, to be, like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be blunt with you. I really don't know right now. You know, uh, it was the rumors. You know, you had Celtic who came in hot, but it was like that kind of blew over. And now, you know, in my opinion, the price going up. You know, uh, that's how. That's just personal. Talk your feel. shit, boy. Talk <laughs> your shit. I love that. I love that. That's just, that's just, that's just and that's not come up in an arrogant way, but in a real way, like. You know, I put in. So let's I, be I really real. Let's like be real. Do you do you see yourself in a Union jersey next season? Personally, personally, like I think it's it's moving in a direction where. Come on, just say be, it, boy. Just say it. What you think? <laughs> don't worry. Don't, Mark, don't who's your agent, hey, you, 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 you don't know. know. He ain't from the Bronx. He ain't from. You the say Bronx. you don't know. He ain't from hey, the Bronx. Bro. He ain't from hey, bro. First of all, I'm West Chester. I'm McCoy Gibbs. He's from, nah, Connecticut. Nah, nah, nah. He from Connecticut. Yo, you can say, hey, yo, bro. You can say no, this is fake. Hey, come on, now. <laughs> <laughs> he went Gilly. Hey, B's call. You gonna call Gilly, man? Gilly gotta tell us something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. Honestly, I, I, I really the plan is to not see myself in New Jersey. You know, in New Jersey next year. You know, that's that's the goal right there. Um, 
I, I talk with, with, you know, Corey and them, you know, and trying to really, you know, make sure that the club fits my style, but it also fit the club. You know, I have opportunity to go out there and play because at the end of the day, if I'm not playing regular minutes, you know, I'm not going to get national team call-ups. You know, if mm-hmm. I'm not getting regular minutes, the the next club after this next club, you know, may not, you know, it, it may not happen. So uh, I think just being real about, all right, Am I trying to force a move simply to force a move? Do I just want to leave to leave? Or am I trying to find the right fit so that way I can then take the next step, you know, in my career? Uh, because, because again, it's like you see how many instances where, where guys just leave to leave and they find themselves in a situation where they, they kind of become a thing of the past. Um, and ultimately, you know, the mentality for me is it's never been to, to be that, you know, is to make sure that every time I step on the pitch, it's like, damn, all right, yep, you know, he, he's somebody we got to watch out for. Um, you know, it's, it's before the match, you know, already having strikers like, ah, I got to go against this guy. Like, dang, you know, um, that, that's the, that's the. Man, you saw, you saw. <laughs> no, but no, but real yeah. talk though, real talk. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, this is what you were saying. Uh, it's true though, because, and I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever told, told anybody this, but uh, I always told myself I would never play in Germany. You know, it mm-hmm. wasn't, it wasn't my, it wasn't my style. It wasn't how I wanted to play. You know, I like, I like to play. You know, I like I like right. the place. So I always wanted to go to a, you know, Spain or I mm-hmm. ended up going to Mexico. But I like the Latin style. You know, that's when right. I was in Chicago, and I, you know how you know how Bob Bradley plays. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's all football. You play, you play. I went there with to Holland. Same same thing. You play. It's all about the ball. All you do is mm-hmm. train with the ball. So when I left Rangers to go to uh, Hanover in Germany, like uh, it was it was it was a tough it was a tough decision because after that it was like about about I would say about a month where I didn't have I didn't know where I was going you know what I'm saying and I was like man I mean I want to play I mean I mean I was in Miami chilling mm-hmm. I was in Miami offseason chilling after I left Rangers and after the World Cup in 2010 and I was like man where am I go and then Hanover called and I'm like and I was I was like okay do I take this and be like let's let's try to you know what I'm saying let's try to get my career back on track and blah 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 or am I just going to do this to actually like try to go like you said you know, you, you, you make a decision for not for the first move, but even the next move, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And I made a move just for that first move. And it was the worst decision of, <laughs> it was the worst decision of my life. You know what I'm saying? I made, I made a, I mean, it taught me a lot of, of, about myself, you know what I'm saying? When I went to Germany, cause I, I didn't play, but at the same time, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about what was going to happen within the next, you know, three or four years. I was just, I made a move just because I was tired of sitting in Miami, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I wanted to play. You know what I'm saying? And so I made somewhat of the wrong decision in that, in that part. But it, it taught me uh, about myself. It taught me you know, I had a new, a, new, a, new, a new thought process about football and how, I, how I've pursued myself on the field. You know what I'm saying? And then when I went to Mexico, it was different. But, yeah, I, I 100% agree with you what you're saying, though. It's, not, it's, a, it's, a, it's a calculated decision. It's not something that comes easy. No, for sure. For sure, yeah. So that's, that's kind of just like my, my mental right now. Um, you know, as, as much as I respect and, and thankfully for the opportunities, I, I feel like at the end of the day, you see you see how many guys are coming up now. Like Chris Richards, for example, you know, he's starting to get some minutes with Bayern Munich, the best team, arguably the best team in the world, right? So so that opportunity, you know, if he can see to solidify himself, it sets him up to, to be, you know, the mainstay in the national team all the way through, you know, the next couple World Cups. Um, you know, Is so, that your number one goal is to make sure you're a mainstay in the national team or is it to – to the five European club? I would say uh, first and foremost would be to solidify myself, you know, you know, as I'm in a club, you know, in a club, just again, playing consistently, playing at a high level, playing against the best of the best. And, and that from there will open the door with the national team. Um, you know, again, we talk about competition with the center back pool. You got John Brooks and, and Richards. You got myself, you got Eric Palmer Brown, Cameron Carter Vickers, Matt Mia, you know, so there's a long list of players, but at the same time, there's no reason I don't see myself, you know, being in the World Cup. You know, and none of the people World you Cup. just named gonna be on the list. Yourself? I mean, no, 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 no. All, I mean, the first two, the first two or three, yeah. But then yeah. the rest, nah. nah. Listen, yeah. listen. Nah, um, I mean, I know. Hey, I, I know that you y'all. Might, gonna, you might, know, you might as well put my name in that list. I know. I know that. Listen, hey, I know listen, that. I know that. I know that. Some of my homies, you know. I know that you're But it's it's you. It's you, John Brooks. Uh, I think Long will be there. Yeah. Um, what's Chris the other Richards. dude's name? Yeah, Chris Richards. Um, but yeah, I don't. Oh, think me, I uh, 
What about the Miyaka? Miyaka? No, Miyaka, I don't no, think so. No, no, no. It's Tim Ream, Tim Ream can't make that play either. So this is not as deep. Then in the Vickers. Hey, don't he play for Tottenham or something? Nah, nah, he got on loan. He on loan. I think he's on Tottenham and they loaned him out. And yeah, I watched them play, brother. He not he not up to the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I know them, I know them your homies, but you only name like two people on that list that's not gonna be on. Yeah, yeah, personally. <laughs> again, again, I'll restate this. There's no reason I don't see know. myself. You know, playing. Know, this this man started uh, naming lists like Eddie Poe. I'm, I'm <laughs> fighting with Eddie Poe, Gucci <laughs> Anye. Will. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm like, well, hold on, man. None of these none of these guys are gonna hey, be playing. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, keep it real, right? Um, the game against El Salvador Soccer Club. Was it fun for you? <laughs> he said soccer club. Yeah, honestly, don't disrespect bro, the country was... like that, man. Right. They, didn't put, they had a COVID issue, so they didn't put out the top team. So. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those games where, you know, I think if I got my first start with the national team, but it wasn't the, you know, the match that I was really, you know, able to yeah. showcase my game. You know, I had a couple moments, you know, here and there, but it was – That goal was – they took away a goal from you. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they did. They took away my first, you know, senior right. team goal. But, but at the end of the day, it was – it was one of those games where you, you have to do a job, you do your job, and you keep a clean sheet and keep it moving. But uh, I don't think it was personally a game where I was able to, to fully showcase, you know, what I could do. What was um, the feedback there'll, to there'll you? Be, there'll be other times. There'll be other for times. Sure, for sure. Other for games. Sure. Other tough games. For sure. For sure. So, what he was, was great. Now, he was, he was just like, look, you, you did a solid performance. You know, when you were called on, you, you did your job. Um, you know, there's, of course, you know, he's, he's very uh, – it's very detailed, you know, detail oriented. So, you know, if you send me clips, you know, areas where like, all right, you know, your speed of play here could be quicker or your processing could be quicker here or this decision here, or you could be higher in your, your defensive positioning to attack a, a goal kick or, you know, things like that, um, you know, that, uh, that are kind of pointers that I can look at, you know, from this game, but but nothing that's, you know, too crazy. Uh, just because, again, it was it was an onslaught, you know, it could have been 10, 10 0 for, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, Goose, Goose. Gooch, how many games we've been in like that back then? Because you got to, because Mark, you got to understand, because you got to understand now the CONCACAF is, is a lot better than what it is, yeah. you know, what it, what it was back before, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because it was, it was literally just USA and Mexico, and that was yeah. it. I mean, even Costa Rica, they were, they were decent. They were okay. They were coming up. They were always a, a tough team to play against. But like the El Salvador. Oh, here come Wi-Fi B's. Oh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was talking about it. Here come Wi-Fi B's. <laughs> he you thought we were joking. Talking. You thought we were joking. No, this he, man, he, he's been good for like five. He looked good that way, though. Look at B's posing like that. <laughs> I knew it was coming, too. I knew it was coming. I was like, oh. Dang, B's. He's going he to come back and be like, what I missed. <laughs> 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 Yo, but real talk to continue on that. <clears throat> I like your mentality. I like your mentality. Uh, if I leave you, if I ever told you any advice, and you all, you know I have, we've had a couple conversations mm-hmm. here, candid conversations here and there. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna tell you this: always treat your success and your failures as imposters. Mm-hmm. Now, what I mean is that none of your failures are gonna last forever, and none of your successes can 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 last forever right Mm -hmm. so you have to know they're gonna come in waves how do you make yourself better from that how you make how do you react to that you know and and understand that a career is like that only Mm -hmm. only i don't know what percentage small percentages careers just continue to right to have a vertical incline like that but i I, i'm really uh proud of the young man that you you've turned out to be from some years ago when i was at philly and i saw the the promise in you as a player and I was like, man, I, I really hope this guy develops. I really d- do hope in a couple of years he, like, grows into his own. When yeah. you and Mo was beating up on me, bro, I was a skinny twig, bro. Y'all was... I mean, you still skinny. Don't, don't get it twisted, now. All no. right, listen, we all can't be, all right, bro. Uh, that, that's a great question, though, Gooch, because at one time you were skinny and you eventually got into the gym and got into, uh, you know, bulking up a little bit more. Uh, Mark, have you, have, you, have you recognized that there's something that you need to do more of, less of? Sure. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely an area where where I can improve. You know, I've been on a few programs now. Um, it's been weird just because of, of how up and up and down it's been. Um, so a lot of it's just been maintaining at, at the crib. You know, especially in a lockdown. Um, but but putting on some some muscles is that something definitely in you know in the plans. Uh, just going forward. Uh, but but also on the pitch in this area where you know again that two footedness is something that I'm continuing to to refine. And, you know, how did you get your left foot so good? Um, Bro, honestly, like, 
this lockdown, I just went went ham on it, you know, just yeah. just you know working on the technique and striking the ball in different ways, you know, whether it be. Um, luckily enough, uh, the club team that I used to play for when I when we first moved out here, um, they have a, a turf field, you know, and, and they know me there. So I was able to to slide up there with Anthony Fontana, um, nice. Claude Medcar. You know, they uh, we, we linked up a few times. Well, pretty often in lockdown, just because we couldn't really be with nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, so we said, "Yo, let's just let's just join up and, and, and work yeah, on some stuff." And from there, just smacking the ball in different ways, you know driven balls on the ground, driven balls mid-height, driven balls, you know, uh, through the air, driven balls, uh, you know, to the outside back, curve balls into the channel, you know. So just working on that technique was something that I, I really just put in time yeah. into. Yeah, I saw you had a chip with the left foot. I said, who do you think you are, yo? <laughs> this man think he nasty like that? Oh, <laughs> uh, man, uh, yeah. But, but uh, you know, you're up for the Young Male Player of the Year, 2020. Um, it's uh, your – teammate or former teammate Brendan Aronson mm -hmm. uh, former U20 teammate Chris Richards uh, the person who scored a hell of a goal today yeah. Giovanni Reyna and how the hell they have Musa on here <laughs> bro I think that's you know they gotta they gotta try and secure <laughs> this man, secure this man play one game <laughs> damn play one game. <laughs> player of the year I, I, told these guys, I told these guys last episode they better give him Rihanna to make sure he's staying uh, Bro, they're trying to lock it down so is he that good I hear from from what I've heard and from what yeah. I've seen he's a, he's a baller you know he, he's got the, the the makings to be a real a, a real baller you know I'm not sure I think he played uh, like the eight ten, you know, in the camp with us, and then he, he's playing on the wing at Valencia. But mm -hmm. uh, I was talking like Chris and Timo, um, you know, with Richie and, and Soto and them, and yeah. you know, they say he's a, he's a real baller, you know, Weston Tyler. So they were like, yeah, this kid, he could, he could play. So mm. he's only what eighteen? He's eighteen. He just turned eighteen. Yeah, he just turned eighteen. I'm so actually, so. I'm actually a question, right? Um, Guchan Yewu is on the athletes U.S. Athletes Council. So he's a big shot now, right? So now. I think he has something to do with these. <laughs> you, you, hear the, you hear the disrespect? You my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. Okay. You said now. As a, as, a, as a football player. But I think he has something to do with the, the, with the voting of the U.S. Um, soccer you know, athlete of the year. What would you tell Gooch, and keep it BX, what would you tell Gooch is the reason why you should win this award? First of all, we have nothing to do with this. I know I'm <laughs> preaching. Gooch, play along with the whole shit. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah, we have everything to do with this. We have everything to do with this. Hey, Gooch, come on, bro. Yeah, put some respect on my name, bro. I don't, hey, I, don't vote for, I don't vote for people from Connecticut, brother. I, I don't hey, bro, I don't know who from Connecticut. I, I don't know who from Connecticut. You gonna vote, all right, you tell me now. You're going to vote, you gonna vote for a cat who, who isn't even tied to the U.S. yet, okay? Mm -hmm. You gonna vote for a cat from Medford, New Jersey? Yeah, who fucking Medford? Sorry, <laughs> you go for a cat from Birmingham, Alabama. Woo. They don't even play. They don't even play stock out there. All right. Wow, Chris, wow. you too country for this award, brother. You too country for I'm this. Sorry, award. bro. <laughs> all right. Well, what about you? What, what about you? What about your boy from the from the Union Academy? B, oh, he already said him. My boy and everything, Medford. but but he from Medford. Come on, yeah, bro. Just, just, just because he's from Medford? Just because he's from Medford? Yeah, bro. Medford, come on, bro. And then Gio only plays for Dortmund, dog. Come on. It's, look, it's... Come on. If I, had, if I had the last name, Reina, I had the last name Reina, too. Come on, bro. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So, hey. Hey man, only because you came in here looking like <laughs> looking like Usher Raymond. I, 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 I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna slide that vote your way. I'm gonna slide that vote your way. There you go. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Hey, I appreciate that, nah, man. man, man. I'll, I'll make sure I send you a sign, you know, confessions <laughs> album or something. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, I think, um, my brother, I, I, I'd love to know who bust who bust your ass one time. You was like, man, I gotta get my get my life right. Uh, Gooch said nobody's ever did that. I don't think anybody's ever really like fussing like that. To be honest, nobody you, made like, you fall. Nah, bro. I've been megged a few times, but you know, after you make me, you really gonna get the ball back. I don't know if that's gonna happen. And nobody friend. dominated you. No striker has dominated you in a game, especially when you were your first couple seasons of the Union. Trick question, boy. Don't answer. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna say nobody disrespecting yeah, yeah. me or dominating me like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Of course, the, the game is 90 minutes, so you're not gonna be perfect the entire game, right? But 
No, nobody, nobody's really ever dominated me. Ain't uh, nobody son you. Ain't nobody yeah, son you. Ain't nobody put me under their arm and say, hey, good job, kid. You know, ain't nobody <laughs> do none of that. You know, you know, so I, nah, but but yeah, I think I, I think I've definitely learned over these last three years, you know, not to again, like you said, take take the good with the bad because it's all temporary. You know, uh, you see how quick things can change up. Um, you see how quick people can change up. You know, I've learned that uh, just being in, you know, in learning about the politics in the game. <clears throat> Definitely, definitely. Well, let's, uh, um, I want to give a, a shout out to Richie Ledesma. Mm-hmm. He just tore his ACL. Yeah, man. <clears throat> and that's a young man who was, you know, he was just, just, just getting to be a, a starter. Um, you know, and, and that's a tough one, but I know you're gonna bounce back even better. Uh, I want to give a shout out to your boy Ray Gaddis. Didn't he yes, just win like Ray. the nicest person in the world award? What was that award? <laughs> <laughs> Ray, and I was speaking about Ray and I want to close off is um, going through everything we went through in 2020. Uh, what have you learned and what are you going to take from 220 uh, into 2021? Yeah, man, it was, uh, it was a lot, you know, just to digest, you know, this is a black man, a young black man, you know, uh, aside from the game, um, just seeing how much was going on, uh, I don't think people, you know, fully realize that when you step outside the lines, you take off that jersey, and I'm driving in my car. People don't see me as Mark McKenzie, filled up Union defender. They see me as a young, you know, just as a black man, you know, driving on the street. You know, I got a 15% tent on my window, you know, for the summer, and that's not seen as a, a threat. <laughs> you know, that's seen as a, a target. You know, so. With everything happening, I think I really came in, into my own, you know, as a as a voice, you know, for this next generation, um, and and understanding that <laughs> ain't everybody gonna like that, you know, <laughs> not everybody gonna like the fact that you have a voice, not especially as a black person. It's, you know, sometimes a tough pill to swallow when it come come out, you know, from from my perspective. Um, so uh, I I've leaned a lot on on guys like Ray, you know, guys like Warren in the locker room who. Mm-hmm you know, supporting me, you know, and, and trying to, to make sure that I was inspiring others, you know, especially uh, other young black uh, black men in, in positions of, of influence to, to really make sure that we are letting our voice be heard, you know, not allowing uh, the forces that be in place right now, you know, to, to, to silence that or to, to overshadow that um, because they wouldn't be trying to silence it if it didn't matter, right? Definitely. Um, so, yes, but uh, uh, I think that for me, I, I'm going to build on this year, um, just in a, in a point of educating myself further, you know, and finding ways that I can be more impactful. You know, I think we've, we've made, you know, some progress, especially locally um, in the city of Chester, you know, Ray and Warren, they were, you know, big, big testament to that as well. Um, but I feel like I, I kind of brought that, that youthful uh, energy and, and a dynamic, you know, to that mix. You know, and helping you know, helping push you know those other kids coming up, you know, in my generation and younger to to really say, all right, that you know what, there's different ways I could be a leader, you know, in my community. Uh, there's different ways I could be a, a leader, you know, in, in this skin because they ain't always easy. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> there's power that comes with it. So yes, uh, it's been a yeah, definitely been a, a an emotional year, but but one where where I feel like. I've made strides, you know, to to, to help, you know, in, in the fight, but you know, still got ways to go. So uh, we see that, you know, just with, a week ago it was December fourth, you know, with the a black man being killed in Ohio, yeah. you know. So I still got to read up more on that that uh, that incident, but you know, it's, it seems like when you take a few steps forward, you take ten steps backwards, right? Exactly. So it's uh, it's the uphill climb. Man. It does, it does. So no, it ain't gonna stop though. No, man, I'm not you, gonna you, stop. You're a you're a man beyond your years. I'm glad that you you soaked up all the knowledge that I sprinkled on you some years ago, and have have become this, you know, well spoken, educated, you know, wonderful soccer player that you are right now. And you know, I'm gonna speak on behalf of bees because his internet's out. You know, we <laughs> we, uh, we can't wait to see what the future holds for you because we know it's gonna be bright, brother. Uh, so oh, appreciate, appreciate that coming on this. Let's get it, brother. And uh, I appreciate that. You know, to take it easy in Connecticut over there in the background, and uh, we'll uh, we'll catch you the next time. What well, next time you're on here, you're gonna be playing for a different club. Might be speaking a different language. Might have a different background. So yeah, man. 
We'll see. Yeah, man. I'm going to definitely uh, I keep you on the loop. Hey, but, listen, uh, maybe ch- make sure you, you're trying to get Corey Gibbs on here. His punk, he think he uh, he want to talk to the media. So <laughs> we're not, he has learned we're not media. We're his brothers. So I just want you to make sure you send him a text. Let him know how great of a time you had and to get his ass on the crack show. Hey, All I right? got you. I got you. All right, All right Mark. Uh, thank you again, brother. And uh, be good. Are you here? I appreciate y'all. Y'all stay safe right. and enjoy Peace. the holidays, man. You too, right, bro. Peace. Goose, cool. so let me get a jersey too, bro. Come on, wait. <laughs> and tell bees too. Thank you, big fan. I need everybody a jersey, all right? All right, then. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Yes. There you have it. There you have it. Um okay, yeah, part two. The better part of, version. Part of our trio. Yeah, he is going to be the better version. I got no, no qualms yes, to say yes. that. If he's not, then we did something wrong. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, obviously, B couldn't take the heat, so he got out the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Wi-Fi finally gave up on him. He was one, doing good for a little while, though. One, he was doing good for a couple months, I tell oh, you. A couple months, man. Wait, the, the light bill he didn't pay. You know the CBS I mean? took all that, all his Wi-Fi away. He spent all that <laughs> CBS money already. That's the problem. Oh, shoot. No, man, but uh, Mark. Good people, man. I told you, he's a, he's a good young kid. He's gonna Big be- smooth. I don't know. I might like that Usher. Uh, oh, here comes Beast. Beast just didn't want to talk to him. I might <laughs> like that. I don't know if I like Usher or Big Smooth is his nickname. I, I might have to go with that Usher. The kid is kind of, he do look like Usher. I ain't going to lie. I told you, he came in. Oh, Demarcus. I'm man. on. <laughs> 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 what I miss? <laughs> Yo, Mark cursed, Mark cursed out Gooch. You, you should have been there. <laughs> oh, man. He, out, he bullied Gooch. Gooch got uh, scared. We've been, waiting, we've been waiting for this to happen, Beast, for eight months. Yo, <laughs> Wi-Fi my, Beast. Yo, I had to cut out. I had to take out the cords of the, the internet, the ethernet, all types of dog. My whole, <laughs> yo, the whole internet shut down, the whole house, whole yeah. crib. My whole crib. We've been waiting on. We've been waiting on this. We've been waiting on this. We've been waiting on this. <laughs> well, now I guess I. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Now y'all, the Wi-Fi oh, yeah, bees is back. I know y'all got jokes. Bees is back. Man. Yo, I'm just glad it happened now and not when you on CBS. Straight up, right? Straight up. Why? <laughs> like, Why? Why? Like, Why? Why? Like, Why? What do you think? <laughs> so, Goose, I don't understand. That. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, so how, how was the show? It's your own, your own show. For, you rather him not have it on CBS? <laughs> nah, man, man. Hey, man. I, I, I don't want this, man. This, this isn't nationally broadcasted on television, right? How, how, how was the show? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> yo, my father, Yo, my whole, the whole house shut down. That the whole yo, house. best show yet, bro. Best show best yet. Show yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and B, since since that happened, man, you don't have to close the show today, brother. Man, I, I need to get some new internet. That's all I need. I, you know what? I need to spend my CBS money to get a better internet service. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I just want to say thank you for everybody for uh, for tuning in. Again, I'm mean, gonna make sure you, you guys subscribe, share, make a comment, talk about Bees' Wi-Fi, and uh, <laughs> what do you think is a better nickname for Mark McKenzie? Is it Big Smooth or is it Usher? I want to say congratulations to Gucci on Yewu. For a milestone um, and going back at 43 years old to get wow. his degree. <laughs> now, I'm older than, now I'm older than Mookie. <laughs> uh, All right, please go go, go, right. go go get your internet fixed, brother. Yeah, <laughs> I need to. Yeah, my fault. My fault. I'll let y'all. All, All right. right. Peace. Peace.